Hello amigos, Dr. Doug here. Today I want to talk about cleansing, that is internal cleansing. Uh, the term became popular sometime around the 60s, I believe. Although cleansing in America goes back to the early part of the 20th century when people were concerned about pollutants in their food. Well, the first part, I want to talk about measuring. How do you know if you're clean on the inside or not? And then the second part, in the second part, we'll examine uh, different ways of cleaning out garbage from the inside. <laughs> so, how do you know that you're clean? Well, scientifically, measure your body fat your body fat percentage and this gets into a concept called the optimal lean zone for men that means about three to seven percent body fat men need three to seven percent body fat to be healthy that include the body fat by the way includes everything that's non-lean it's not lean so muscle bone skin, connective tissue, organs. These are all lean tissue. Everything else is non-lean. And that's included in a body fat percentage test. Uh, impacted fecal matter is a big one, right? Growths like tumors, cholesterol in your blood, uh, phlegm sitting around, lymph that isn't discharged, etc. All of that is what we need to clean out. That's what we want to remove. And keep it out. So, to find that optimal lean, and for women, it's higher. Of course, they need more body fat to be healthy. So, somewhere between seven and fifteen percent. It varies with individuals, and it's debated. And I don't really know the exact number. You can find this by uh, a skin pinch test. There's a whole formula for that with calipers. You can get that at a gym usually. Also, there's electronic uh, body fat measuring devices um, in gyms. Every gym now has them. The trainers will show them to you. You can handheld it. You can buy them online. You stand on it. It gives you the weight. It also gives you your body fat percentage. It runs a current through you and detects non-lean tissue. We would call that uh, yin excess that is yin excess material excess material you don't need that's the garbage that needs to come out okay and this is what bodybuilders do they they measure themselves their their body fat percentage so that they can get down so they can get really really lean for those contests then there's instinct your hunger will tell you how lean you are if you are very very hungry that means an empty feeling in the stomach area that motivates you to go out in the wilderness and get food. It's hunger. Which most Americans never feel. Never. Well, they have appetite, all right. They don't have hunger. The stronger your hunger, the closer you are to your optimal lean zone, which means clean. Strong hunger means clean because you're out of fuel. Your body's telling you, hey, I'm out of excess yen. I'm out of all that garbage. I can't recycle anymore. Let's go get some more food. Um, also, you can fast and poop. That's what I call it, fast and poop. I did this a week ago. Sunday night was my last meal. And I fasted all day Monday. Monday morning, I had my bowel movement. I always have a bowel movement every morning. I'm very regular, so I had a bowel movement Monday morning. Didn't eat all day Monday. Tuesday morning, I was looking to see if I had a bowel movement, because if I did, that means I'm not on a 24-hour cycle. I did not have a bowel movement. Yay! Later in the afternoon, I fasted all day, all that day. Later in the afternoon, I had a little bowel movement, just a little bit, 20%, something like that. And that tells me that I'm on approximately a 14-hour cycle. What goes in gets processed and comes out 14 hours later. That means my tubes are fairly clear. I did that as an experiment, as a test. I didn't do it to lose weight. 
don't do it to lose weight. It's not going to work uh, because you're just going to reward yourself for fasting with heaps and heaps of food, which your body doesn't really want. No. But as an experiment, it's a good thing. I once did this, by the way, some years back when I thought I was on a 24-hour cycle. And I fasted for four days and I was pooping every day. And I went, oh my God. So I ate that weekend, then I did it again, another four-day fast. Finally, on the third day, I stopped pooping. It's a fine day. Wow. But even just doing that, that's not going to cleanse you because it's just going to come back. You have to actually get lean. You actually have to lose body fat, which means eating less food. So, but it's a good measurement. And then also symptom relief. If you have symptoms, uh, because of a uh, garbage inside and you do something cleansing whatever uh, and the symptoms go away well that tells you that hey it was working something was working right runny nose skin problems headaches whatever and something you do some you cleanse on the inside and it goes away okay that worked <clears throat> also <clears throat> waist measurement or clothes fitting looser Anytime you lose fat, you're cleansing. In whatever way you do, however you do it, you're cleansing. Because that fat is, well, excess yin, excess material. Uh, enlarged fat cells themselves become toxic. They, do, they, they um, promote heat and inflammation. Not good. Not good. I don't want to do that. And then the weight scale. Oh, my weight is up. My weight is down. This is the least accurate way of telling that you are cleansing. Uh, I, I don't even weigh myself. I know when I'm lean. I know when I'm clean. Lean means clean. I know when I'm clean now. So, Alright, let's look at ways of cleansing. First of all, <clears throat> I recommend you don't fall for the quick fix cleansing schemes. There's a million of them out there. They're all on the internet and they're in books and Oh, do this juice fast for five days and you'll cleanse out, you'll clean out. It's all a quick fix remedy and you can't quick fix your internal garbage. You cannot quick fix. It's not like taking out the garbage, you know, every night or once a week. You can't do that. It stays with you. This is, this is chronic disease and all that garbage, all that, especially the impacted fecal matter. All that fecal matter is, is garbage and it needs to be recycled. You can't just eliminate it. It has to be recycled and it takes time. So don't fall for that stuff. It's just a, it's a scam, juice fast and all this other stuff. Also, you're gonna have to decide that you're gonna wait for hunger and make friends with hunger. If you're not feeling hunger now, it could be many months away while you're eating less food. It could be many, many months away till you get clean enough to feel hunger, but you're going to do it. You're going to make friends with it. If you do feel hunger, well, make friends with it. Uh, let it. Let it hang around for a while. Be hungry for a while. Be okay being hungry. People all over the world are okay being hungry. Hungry is not starvation. It's not malnutrition. It's a healthy feeling. It's an instinct. Don't cover it up with food until you're ready. Until you're ready to have a real meal. Okay. Make friends with hunger. You know, and a hungry body goes after impurities. If you're worried about chemicals in your food, when you're hungry, your body goes after all those chemicals and all that sludge, and all that stuff, big and small, and recycles it. I mean, there are all the scientific studies showing that cells actually recycle minerals and vitamins and proteins. Your body's littered with dead proteins, proteins it can't use anymore. Well, it recycles that protein. It uses it again. It goes after uh, fecal matter in your gut. It says, what can we use here? Let's see what we can use. But you have to not eat in order for that to happen. Now, not eating, the synonym for not eating is fasting. It doesn't have to be under doctor's care. Right? You just eat less. <laughs> Fewer meals, smaller portions, little by little, gradual, gradual. That's the way of nature. That's a healing way. 
Yeah. And you got to work on changing unhealthy habits for healthy ones. If you want to eat less food, and you should eat less food, probably, then you're going to have to work on worrying and hurrying. Because you can't just do a quick fix cleansing program and expect to get anywhere. Uh, you have to stop worrying. Because that's why we overeat. That's why we hurt ourselves with food. And believe me, it hurts when you overeat. You get that full feeling that, uh, well, people would rather put up with that than to be worrying, to be fearful, to be anxious, paranoid, whatever. They'd rather hurt themselves with food because that stimulates ah, that yay feeling up here with that uh feeling down here. And hurrying. You can't be hurrying in your whole life and creating all that heat and expect to not eat because uh, food pushes, you know, that yin pushes that yang down. That's why we eat in response to heat. Well, don't create the heat in the first place. Learn to stop hurrying. Check out my morning Body Trust mornings, five minutes. The purpose of it in the morning is to get you to stop in the mornings. Don't start your mornings running. Don't jump out of bed with your, you know, in a looking cartoon, you know, right? Don't do that. Stop, have a hot drink, watch my show, collect your thoughts, collect yourself, breathe, then go and take lots of breaks. Don't hurry unless you have to hurry. Because I don't. Because that's cleansing the mind. And unless you cleanse the mind, you're not going to cleanse the body, you know? Mind and body are intimately connected, can never be separated. Not truly. So that's my thing on cleansing. And I hope you uh, do cleanse. Because, really, a clean body and a clean mind will help you live a long, healthy life. Thanks for watching. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the interview portion of my show. I'm Dr. Doug. With me today is Christy Gorin. Christy's been on my show before. Christy unclutters people in their homes and in their lives. Hi, Christy. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome Hello. back. Oh, thank you. Uh, Christy, could you tell my audience what you do? It's very unusual. Yeah. This is what she does. Go ahead. <laughs> Basically, I'm an organizer, and what that does is help people to organize their lives in many different ways. It could be anything from paper clutter to clothing clutter to whole life clutter and my whole principle of what I do is basically looking at how all this affects your lives. It's not just about your house looking pretty. It is about how you live your life day by day and what affects you and what doesn't affect you. And it, it just it comes back to the point of whenever you travel, you're in a hotel, there's nothing but your suitcase and a nice bed and a couch and a window, you feel calm, you feel relaxed. And a lot of times it's because you've left all your junk at home and you just feel <laughs> so much better. Then you come home and the crazy starts. So I'm about trying to get people to feel relaxed and at home and on vacation in their own homes. On vacation in their own homes. <laughs> well, you know, I find that's true with uh, people and their uh, a lot of their complaints is that when they go on vacation, their complaints completely disappear, and when they come back, it all comes back. So mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you run into a few cluttered garages in your um, career? I would say there has been a few, if not thousands. Uh, yeah, it seems like we're a part of a generation, many different generations of people who feel that the more they have, the better, 
or they might need it. So well, the, the, the person who dies with the most stuff wins. Right, right. So they start collecting and hoarding and holding on to, and many don't feel it's hoarding. Well, I might need that someday. I might need that that exercise bike. I might need those skis, even though they're way outdated. Uh, the so, old, so what do you tell people like that? Well, I feel that if it's easily replaceable, then to let go of it if you can. Less is more in the long run. If it's something that's irreplaceable, something you cannot replace again, uh, then then maybe let it go. Let someone else use it. Donate it to charity. Let someone else enjoy it. Uh, you'll find uh, there's such a freedom with having uh, less in your life. Um, my husband's an avid snowboarder, but we don't get to go as much as we'd like. So now he's just gotten into a routine of renting his, his equipment every year because he gets the top equipment every year instead of buying, storing, maybe not using it. We don't have a garage. We live in a condo. So it's it's just a lot lighter. It's easier. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you're a minimalist, aren't you? Oh. Ah, I, I think so. I, I'm not uh, a total minimalist that has nothing in their right. homes right. because I've got two children. You're a sensible minimalist. Yeah, that's that's a better title for it. I, I really love the less is more philosophy. I I feel like in my house, my kids are relaxed. My husband and I feel very relaxed at home. Like when we come home from a vacation, we're very happy to be here because we feel relaxed. We don't feel overwhelmed with projects of just stuff in the closets, in the garage, in the backyard. And not, we just don't have that. It feels so easy. So we enjoy that. We enjoy having less. I noticed in your home you have bare surfaces yes. like that. <laughs> Do you know people who can't stand uh, bare surfaces? Yeah, many times we'll I'll suggest to a client, why don't we get rid of this table or maybe these pictures? And the comment almost always says, well, what, what will I put there then? And it, it nothing, maybe nothing. It's, it's, it's fun to have space, space to think, space to be, space to create. When everything is filled up in your house, every surface, every wall, every bookshelf is just packed and hoarded. Yeah, you don't have any room for creating new. And I really believe in that. I believe that we need to recreate ourselves constantly. Um, I think you mentioned to me that people of a certain age are worse hoarders than than others. There's like yeah. an age thing, a generation I think it's, thing. It's, it's, think? it's general, my thoughts on this, but I feel like um, our parents generation didn't have as much they didn't have credit or online shopping so they kept what they had they they really they kept everything they had because they didn't really over buy then our generation is in this kind of soup of i better save everything that's what my parents did yet they don't know how to get rid of and filter out what they need and don't need i've got many clients with just years of mail and years of magazines and their parents boxes of pictures and their boxes of pictures and then their kids boxes of pictures they don't know how to deal with it and that's something that I'm dealing with a lot in the ages of maybe 40 to 60 mm -hmm. it's a very big mm -hmm. challenge for them and I feel like they don't have the skill because their parents didn't have those skills and then I'm finding that the generation that's the 30 and younger don't really tend to have as much stuff but I'm still needing to help them figure out how to organize what they do have. And my feeling is if you're going to keep things, ask yourself, who am I keeping it for and why? And then we can, from there, create some memory books or a box of your memory items. But then you're not, you're not dealing with a whole garage or whole closets or a whole house full of what you think are memories. Well, giant piles of clutter probably attract critters. Oh, yes. I find what kind of critters? little critters all the time in people's garages. Silverfish love paper, so oh, right. that's a fun one. Right. If you'd like to collect silverfish, <laughs> um, rats and mice love 
clothing and uh, stored food and I mean pretty much everything you want to put in a garage so less is more for many reasons and you know they don't even people don't even put their cars in their garages anymore oh, no. this is just crammed with stuff no nope. how about books bookshelves uh, books are dust collectors dust if you collectors ever move move books around they're just filled with dust so, so heavy. i love books for resources and for beauty but if you're not reading them or you won't read them again move them to someone else who read them and only hold on to those things that are truly magical that really really means something to you if you need to keep it i'm one for moving books along christy were you always uh, an organizational uh genius i like to say organizational guru <laughs> okay um i think i was always pretty organized as a were kid you? i was one of those people but were your parents organized or? no not really my dad a little more than my mom i think you know but we never had a hoarded house i just one that feels the energy i think in, in homes that feel nice and from that did a lot of um work in space clearing energetic feng shui um i learned a lot of different techniques throughout the years what do you think of feng shui um i think if it feels right it's right so feng shui has a lot of uh, rules and and uh, ideas for how things work which I think uh, are really interesting but sometimes when it comes down to it if it feels right then that's the right feng shui for you okay kind of intuitive mm -hmm. feng shui. listening to yourself uh, listening to how you feel in the mm -hmm. home seeing how things work I think feng shui is a great uh, kind of thing to check out see how you feel, get some ideas. Yeah, a place to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and when did you start uh, this uncluttered business of yours? How long, how long have you been doing that? Maybe. How did that come about? Well, I started uh, working with uh, a mentor uh, with the uh, feng shui side of it. And that was in 2003. And I worked for many years doing space clearing. Um, but from that, I started feeling an affinity for actually helping people to move around and so get rid of their stuff. So there are space clearers out there, mm -hmm. people that clear energy, put things clear spaces. In. Mm -hmm. So they're not just people that put things in pretty boxes and organize your closets. Well, that's the whole thing with it. And... Yes and no. I mean, that's a designer, too. Oh. A designer can do that. I think that many organizers, I think organizational help varies between each person you work with. Some organizers I know just like the client to be gone and they'll put everything to look pretty. Um, I find that to me that that's completely backwards because what I think is important to you uh, may not be, especially when it comes to kitchens. You know, maybe you're a cook, maybe you're not. You know, are you left handed or right handed? Uh, what do you grab for first? Are you one that puts stuff in? Tupperware or do you put things in bags? I, I, there's so many things. And so I, I work side by side with my clients in their organization. And you're recently needing to expand, I understand, because you're yeah. so busy. Yes. And you're encountering these large. Large homes. Large homes with tons and tons of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I live in a, in a condo with my children and husband and we wish we were in a, a bigger space sometimes, but I what I see is time and time again is the more that you have, the more space you have, the more stuff you have. So some of my very uh, wealthy clients with magnificent homes, huge, they're just packed with stuff. More extra bedrooms, the bigger closets, the bigger garage, the more stuff that you have. And it just seems a lot more pressing for those people, a lot more pressure. And it, and so I do need assistance um, to help me now get through this stuff. Well, I'm glad you're expanding and I'm glad you're helping so many people. And I know that this clears, to me, I look at it like what you're doing is helping people clear their past so they can move forward. Because mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff is just holding people back in their past. Everything you own is your past. Correct. Right? So well if you said. Want, you want to be in the present, and I gotta let go. Very much so. I have another client that um, likes to keep all of her tax records so she can remember 
her jobs she's had. And I understand that, but I, I'm, I don't, it, it feels like a connection to the past that is so tight that it's hard to move forward. Yeah, it's a ball and chain. Mm -hmm. It can be a ball and chain, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Well, Christy, uh, this has been great. If people want to uh, get in touch with you, how can they do that? I have a website, which is uncluttereda.com, and my email is Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E, at uncluttereda.com. Fantastic. Thank you. And thanks for being on my show once again, yeah, Christy Gorin, Uncluttered LA. Check her out. And thank you, everyone, for watching my show. Until next time, Dr. Doug Sam, stay healthy. Hello, amigos. Please subscribe to my show and share it with your friends. Also, click that little bell so that you will receive notice every time I post a new episode.